Hey, it's Joel. We're in the backyard at the fire pit and it's summer break and it's late at night. My laptop is inside and I don't want to go back to the studio and I want to print something for tomorrow. And so while my son David manages the fire, I'm going to take you through a really unique, cool thing called Easy Print and it's from Prusa. And the, the idea is it's a slicer on your phone or on your desktop or anywhere you have a browser. It's a browser based slicer. I'm within the Prusa app right now on my phone and I can go down here to easy print. And this, this cool model, I believe it's by bear 3d. Um, it's, I'm going to print it on my fishy core one. <laughs> it's the, it's the one that has the magnetic fish on it. So I can just tap my core one there and it gives me a build plate. Now I'm going to add a model bring loaded hex there it is spring loaded hex bit case perfect it brings me the files up in the browser that i want and so what i'm going to do is select all and then down at the bottom hex bit assembly a1 mini we don't need that one because we're on the core one so i'm just going to unselect that and now i'm going to hit add selected files at the bottom it brings them onto a core one build plate. What's really great about easy print, not just that it's a Prusa slicer in the cloud browser based slicer. It's that the interface allows for touch devices like iPhones, iPads, and Android devices. I've got the model here, a couple of these pieces that you have to uh, print two of. And so with that one spring mechanism, I'm going to hit the more button and clone because I just need one more of those. And then let's see if I can that bolt little thing. I need, I need two of those. Perfect. Um, on the left hand side, I can hit the arrange and it's going to just kind of put everything in its place. Look at that. This is a browser. I am, I'm within a browser in Prusa slicer and I'm able to scroll around and see in detail the model that I want to print before we go into preview, what I want to do is go into the settings. And so I don't need 0.15. I'm going to choose balanced. Uh, no supports is correct. Increase adhesion like a brim and whatnot. We don't need infill of grid. That's gross. Why would you ever choose grid? No, don't like that. What you should do is scroll down and choose gyroid, which is the tastiest of infills. So we're good on the settings. I'm going to tap it again and then uh, I'm going to hit preview the material I have it loaded in my core one right now it's from it's their buddy line of filament and it's a PLA so basic materials PLA and I can go to buddy 3d PLA so now it's processing everything in the cloud it's not doing it on my iPhone and it's um, it's a lot faster that way detected print stability issues uh, enable supports and try again I'm not gonna worry about that and this is a preview so watch this if I can if I can zoom in, you can actually scroll through the print. How freaking cool is that? Are you seeing this? So we chose the fishy printer uh, material. So it's Buddy 3D and now I can change it from orange to blue. There we go. I think we're good to go. Uh, I'm going to hit print. Print overview. Core 1 fishy. <laughs> is it ready for printing? Have you removed the previous finished model and cleaned the print bed? I have. I'm going to hit yes. Okay, it says I need 102 grams of PLA. It's gonna take five hours, three minutes, and it got, it's got the name there, and it's gonna send it to Core One Fishy. So I'm gonna start print. Print started. I run Ubiquity hardware at my studio, and we can see that the Core One actually has the status of a print starting. That's easy print. And what's kind of cool is I can sit out here with David and still enjoy the fire late at night on summer vacation. The fire's still going. What do you think? Get some marshmallows or something? Oh, yeah. Yeah, get some marshmallows or something. And then I'll see you in the morning. Tomorrow. Well, it's the next day. Uh, that fire pit was great. Uh, my son and I got to hang out for a bit and and a print happened. Like, it's, it's right back there. Let me go get it. <laughs> I'm using one of those BQ plates and it's they're super sticky. Uh, I just I just love the heck out of them. The, the pieces look good. I think the printer did a fantastic job. Now let's get them off the plate and put it together. Oh my goodness, those are held on really well. And forth, there we go. They make good plates. 
The model is by Bear 3D Tech, and it it's a cool model because it solves a problem that I have. The the bits for my screwdriver aren't in a good spot, and I will show you those in just a little bit. But this is one of those things where it's it's a unique way to store them, and it utilizes aspects of 3D printing and how material lays down in order to to make it functional. So first. These are springs, 3D printed little springs, and they're gonna go in just like that. And we're supposed to put filament through to use as, as the piece that holds it together, the, the, the part of the hinge, and I got some right here. So uh, one of the things that I love about 3D printing is how we design things to utilize the material. We make things holes that are 1.75-ish millimeters in diameter so that we can utilize the base material just to hold it together. That's pretty cool, man. I'm using Prusament Galaxy Black because I have a whole bunch of it right over there. So I'm just using that. I cut off a section and we're gonna feed it through. This part fits right inside of here. Uh, but watch this, watch this. So it closes and it clicks into place, and then, okay, should open. <laughs> How cool is that? So these springs, because they're printed flat on the bed, then the, the tension is put along the, the parts where it's not gonna break. So it's not trying to bend on a layer line. It's utilizing the continuous nature of the filament to provide that springy nature. I wanna show you. I've got an LTT screwdriver. LTTstore.com. I've got these bits. So I've got a Phillips set and a metric set. They're, they're, they're just kind of there and then they fall out. And the storage in the LTT screwdriver is up here, which you can, you can hold some of your most used ones, but I thought rather than store these in here, I can put a whole bunch of them in here. So give me a sec and I'm just gonna stack them right up. So that was the uh, Phillips set, done. Now we move on to the metric hex set. Now there's no rhyme or reason I'm following for the order. There we go, that was, that was the metric hex set. Cool, there they are. They're right inside and this will close up just fine and I can put it in my pocket. See, it's in my pocket right there. And now I can be out and about and be like, I've got my screwdriver, I need my set of bits. And I can be like, oh look, in my blue box is my set of bits. Nice. I love this. I was at the fire pit enjoying some time and I had an idea that I wanted something. I wanted this and I wanted to be able to set the print to go overnight, but I didn't have my laptop, nor did I have an ability to go to the studio at 11 o'clock at night or whatever time it was. And so utilizing my phone, I used a browser-based slicing solution from Prusa called EasyPrint. It was free and it just worked. Other solutions are out there for slicing. So far, I think this is unique among the solutions and I just like it. Oh, I almost forgot. I was talking about the Core One and EasyPrint and I've got something to show you. I've got some news for the farm and I, I just wanted to show you. So I don't know if you can see there, but there's one, two, three, four, and five. Five Prusa Core Ones that have come into the farm. The idea is we're gonna trial those on the farm and see how they do versus having Mark IVs 3D printers. I've got some high hopes, but again, gotta try it out first in a business setting before you fully commit. So we've got five of them in there. Now those five are gonna replace those five Mark IV S 3D printers, which means there's gonna be five hopeful Mark IV S 3D printers finding a new home in the future. And I'll talk more about that later. But also I need to know what to name them. We use Prusa Connect and we can name the machines and we can sort the machines. And so like I've got machines named after Ninja Turtles. I've got farm machines just named one through 50. What I'd like to know is in the comments, just leave some names that you would want for the five core ones. And then if those names that you've left are some of the most popular, I'll reach out and maybe pick those names for the farm. You could name some of the farm machines.
What? Uh, well, listen, I got a lot of work to do because there's gummy bears in there that need rescuing. And I don't want them to wait. So listen, if you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in and print all the things easily. <laughs> Get it? And as always, high five. All right, back to work. Not until I do this. <laughs>